Okay, so the RPG community just got some insane Dungeons and Dragons news and it is terrifying. And as a result, it has dominated every single conversation I've had with anyone about Dungeons and Dragons since. Seriously, even my therapist brought it up. But here's the thing, this news wasn't posted on a D&D Beyond blog or in a snazzy marketing video. It was never intended to be in the zeitgeist. Rather, it was surreptitiously leaked out into the night from a Hasbro orifice like a, okay, I really don't want to be demonetized again, so what leaks, what leaks? Got it. Like Ivan Ooze in the hit 1995 sensation Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie. But now that Ivan Ooze discharge, this major leak is out there in the wild and the D&D community have found out all about it. And they have gone into a major meltdown, reacting to it with all the vigor of a nun beating an orphan. Already there are calls to boycott Hasbro, the owners of Dungeons and Dragons. Please for subscribers to cancel their D&D Beyond subs and ultimately the community are discussing whether or not to reject entirely the new edition of Dungeons and Dragons 2024 in a major protest. And this is all happening just as the new edition of Dungeons and Dragons has literally launched. And this is all because many in the Dungeons and Dragons space want to avoid this terrifying fate that looks like it's about to befall us. But, and I hate to say this, but alas, I must put on my executioner mask, become ostracized from the community, embrace the Barakuman lifestyle because the extreme fears of the D&D community don't go far enough. This leak is actually much worse than people think. There is so much more going on here and it really, really does suck for Dungeons and Dragons and the RPG scene. Seriously, this scandal has just started and already it is one of the gnarliest D&D news I've ever heard maybe since the OGL scandal and that's probably because the news was never meant to be public at all. But now it is, so we have to talk about it. For context, this all started last month. Well, it really started in 1926 when Big Papa Hasbro took Mother Coast under the oak tree, but that's by the by. See, last month, Hasbro finally decided to bust out of their rock with the biggest news reveal about the future of Dungeons and Dragons that they've ever done. And they delivered this news in a massive all singing, all dancing show, the D&D 2024 Direct Show. Now, this was pumped out in a video Video on YouTube and it was fairly controversial from the outset. It pretty much got picked apart by the internet faster than an Irish grave robber. And that's not a race thing, we've just had a lot of practice. So you know, please subscribe to the channel so I don't have to rob any more graves. People don't bury valuables anymore. Now those Anglo-Saxons. They knew how to make a grave. Now, most of the show was pretty non-controversial, showing some good stuff, like new content coming to D&D from third parties, reveals about a new starter set, there was talk about a player's guide to the Forgotten Realms. This is all really cool stuff. It's good. But tucked away into this show was also a bucket load of tie-in nightmares, because this was our first really, really good look at the new D&D virtual tabletop sigil. And Hasbro chose to announce this new virtual tabletop with the shadow of a Transformer miniature, making it very clear that we should be expecting Dungeons & Dragons Fortnite going forward. In fact, Chris Cow, the head of D&D Sigil, was really explicit in an interview last month, saying that he wants the D&D VTT to be Dungeons & Dragons Fortnite. He wants it to be monetized like a live service game. He wants to attract video gamers and keep them trapped inside Hasbro's new digital space. Presumably all of this groaned out between pumps. So this whole D&D Direct show had folk kinda worried, and overall the reception from the community was about broadly similar as the reception to that advert for jumpers that featured the Pope kissing Ahmed El Taib, Sheik of the Al Hazar Mosque, which actually was an advert for jumpers. I, I didn't make that up and that's kind of weird. So this all caused speculation about the future of Dungeons and Dragons to begin to run rampant. But before anyone could even get really a grip on things, an explosive new 
leak slipped out onto the bed sheets and it blew everything up. So I guess I won't be signing up to D&D Beyond to buy the digital version of D&D 2024 now. Which also, by the way, I just discovered, did you know that Hasbro asked for your name, country, and date of birth when you sign up to D&D Beyond? That's kind of weird, right? Like, why do they want that? Is it to impersonate me online? Is it to send the Pinkertons after me? Is it so Chris Cox, CEO of Hasbro, can find out where I personally live and hang around outside my house in a running car while smoking cigarettes at 3am and then go through my trash to find strands of hair for his love doll? I genuinely want to know why Chris feels like he needs that information. Especially considering that it's an open secret these days that the internet pretty much runs entirely on our data. And corporations sell them to data brokers or lose them thanks to almost near constant data breaches. That's why I made sure to sign up for joindeleteme.com who have kindly offered to sponsor today's video. See, your personal data is most likely already in the hands of many different companies and data brokers. And this puts you at an increased risk of identity theft, stalking, harassment, robocalls, and scams. Delete Me helps reduce the risk of your data getting into the wrong hands by removing your data from hundreds of different data broker websites. But that's not all. They also actively monitor data broker websites to make sure that your personal information is removed and stays removed. Delete Me give me a special code so that you can get an extra 20% off all consumer plans. Simply go to joindeleteme.com slash D D20 or click the link below and use promo code DD20 at checkout. And thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so we have a show about how Transformers are coming to DD, how Hasbro are going to get video gamers into the role playing game hobby via a new digital walled garden. We know about the massive monetization schemes for players and the genuine attempts at recreating Dungeons and Dragons Fortnite. How could Hasbro have possibly made all of this worse? Well, you see, like any normal gingerbread man that miraculously sprang to life, but lost a gun drop button in the process, and is therefore doomed to consume everything it finds just to fill that deep missing void within themselves, Chris Cox, CEO at Hasbro, finally decided that now was the time to drop the charade and munch down hard on every single chocolate bunny that he could find. Sorry, this Candyland analogy thing really got away from me. See, Chris has presumably been on a mad best of the 80s, sci-fi binge and learned absolutely zero lessons from any of them. He probably thinks that burning down the Amazon a la Robocop 2 is pretty cool. And if you don't believe me, well, okay, get this. Chris Cox is a normal human being. You can't prove otherwise. Unlike any normal human being, he was at a Goldman Sachs investment banking confab. Do you know what a confab is? I sure as shit don't. I assume it's a convention, but the kind that you can only get into if you've ever non-sexually used human beings as furniture, and you come dressed only in the coat of a homeless man that you won in the blood pits, or rather paid someone to win for you in the blood pits. And at this little confab, Chris made a pretty big speech, and the speech got leaked out into the peasant villages. Oh no, that's me and you, by the way. And you'll never guess it, but Lord Cox said something extremely wild, something a little bit out of touch, something pretty Pretty terrifying. Quote, Inside of Hasbro development, we've already been using AI. It's mostly machine learning based or proprietary AI, as opposed to chat GPT. We at Hasbro deployed significantly and liberally internally as both a knowledge worker and as a development aid. Though I'm probably more excited about the playful elements of AI, like using AI for emergent storytelling. You're going to see that not just in our hardcore brands like D&D, but also multiple of our brands. Uh, guys, where's the break glass in case of emergency button? I think we press that now, right? This is one of the gnarliest statements I've ever heard from a CEO. And I have a microphone in Zuckerberg's bathroom. Don't ask. So just to emphasize this, Chris Cox said he wants a playful use of AI for emergent storytelling. And you know what this means, right? Chris is saying here that AI is not only being used at Hasbro already, but it is going to be used in Dungeons and Dragons, the game going forward. And also that it's going to be playful. Now, to me, playful only means one thing. Sticking on a giant animal suit and going rawr with your paw and therefore making people question their sexuality. 
reality. Okay, I guess playful can mean two things. Because it also means that all those rumors and leaks about AI DMs were true. Yeah, it turns out AI DMs are just happening now. But even more, Chris is suggesting that we should also be looking forward to things like AI portraits for D&D Beyond, art integration of AI databases, generative text for the D&D game, possibly in sigil, and wildest of all, possibly even the regurgitation of famous dungeon master personalities in an AI DM format. Goodbye, Matt Mercer, Brennan Lee Mulligan, and Johnny D. I mean, you probably don't know Johnny D, but he's the best dungeon master in my local bowling alley. You guys will no longer be needed because no doubt Hasbro are probably downloading the millions of hours of data of all those DMs and getting ready to simulate them in anticipation of our new dystopian cyberpunk future where we all get on our VR headsets and play Dungeons and Dragons like we're having sex in Demolition Man. God, I'm really worried about Johnny D. Uh, Matt Mercer too, I guess. And okay, I get it. There should be a lot of skepticism around this, but the inevitability of radical AI integration into Dungeons and Dragons by Hasbro is not just based on this latest leak. We've also been getting tons of evidence that Hasbro were up to this over the last year, and I've willfully not wanted to believe it. But between Hasbro partnering with the Italian AI company Explored for their board games, hiring senior AI engineers, and another one this week, and Chris Cox openly saying that Dungeons and Dragons has 50 years of content to mine for generative AI, boy, it sure seems like the evidence is really starting to pile up. It's clear that Hasbro see AI as the future of Dungeons and Dragons, and that this likely includes AI DMs. See, while it's true that right now Hasbro make most of their Dungeons and Dragons money from Dungeon Masters, the, the, the fleshy kind that is, after all, they're the ones who typically buy all the D&D books for the table, or invest in the Easy Wipe services. Hasbro have spent the last few years trying to change that, because the Dungeons and Dragons population is relatively small. It's only about 20% of the overall D&D population. And that's why the Sigil Virtual Tabletop is so focused on monetizing the other 80% of the player audience. This is why Chris Cow recently made it clear that Sigil would have a free-to-play element. An ex WOTC president Cynthia Williams said they want to unlock recurrent spending for Dungeons & Dragons players, like in video games, because the brand is under-monetized. Hasbro are trying to make the player market as lucrative for them as the Dungeon Master market by selling skins, virtual dice, special tokens, subscription fees, basically anything that they can think of. But here's a suggestion, Chris. Human milk. Very lucrative in specialty markets. Yet the only way that free-to-play live service video game recurrent spending like this works is if you throw a wide enough net to catch a few wheels. Hasbro really want to maximize the Dungeons & Dragons player base available for exploitation. That makes sense. But they have a major problem there because the size of that player base will always be bottlenecked by the availability of hardcore Dungeon Masters. Yeah! It's a symbiotic relationship. Players need Dungeon Masters and Dungeon Masters need players or else they're just unpublished fantasy writers. So Hasbro's revenue from players will always be limited by the amount of DMs. It can only grow as fast as new Dungeon Masters are popped out by mom and dad or grown in a vat. This is a problem that is unique to RPGs. It is not something that video games like Fortnite have to deal with. So then, what are Hasbro going to do? How can they grow the population of players independent of the availability of Dungeon Masters? Well, it's simple. You just automate the Dungeon Master rule. You remove the Dungeon Master barrier for player growth. You remove the biology. You embrace the machine. Heal Mars. Heal the machine spirit. And that's what investors want. They want more ceiling for growth. And that's why he made this mad statement at a Goldman Sachs dinner, presumably between bites of Ortolan. And if that wasn't enough, Chris went on. He went on to say this, quote, if you look at a typical D&D player, there's not a single person who doesn't use AI somehow for either campaign development or character development or even story ideas. That's a clear signal that we need to be embracing it. So this really is the future, at least as Chris Cox and the Hasbro executives are concerned. Chris Cox and the Hasbro executives. God, that sounds like the worst prog rock band to ever exist. But here's the thing about that. AI dungeon masters, AI integration into D&D Beyond, that's not the worst of this. This story gets way, way worse. See, 
I'm pretty neutral overall on the idea of AI Dungeon Masters, you know, replacing Matt Mercer or God forbid Johnny D, the Sultan of Strikes, with a Chucky Doll DM excluded. That, that I'm not a fan of. I, I don't think that AI Dungeon Masters will ever be as good as a human being DM, which is a really weird sentence to have to say, but there's lots of people out there who just genuinely don't have a Dungeon Master that can run a game of Dungeons and Dragons for them. And those people want to play Dungeons and Dragons, even if they happen to live in a small town or are trapped currently in the blood pits. So having an AI to run the game for them is like the sci-fi equivalent of playing a fighting fantasy book, except you aren't allowed to keep your thumb on the previous page. So you can't guarantee victory every time, which kind of blows, but I can deal. Ultimately, AI Dungeon Masters are a tool. They're a tool I don't trust in the hands of an evil gorilla, never mind Hasbro, but a tool nonetheless. Make no mistakes, there are bad things about that tool. There are bad things that Hasbro can do with that tool. Remember that Hasbro will own the rights to anything created by their proprietary AI, as Chris Cox called it. That includes anything that has a little bit of world building done, that includes any stats or items or weapons created in homebrew, that includes your characters. This could potentially result in a world where Dungeons and Dragons couldn't exist outside of Hasbro, and that is an existential threat to Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, I don't know where we go from there, but it probably ends up with robots launching nukes at everything. Not to mention that if Hasbro ever collapsed, which, to be honest, doesn't look unlikely, we'll lose access to all of that homebrew. Like, I have no longer access to my Yahoo Music. Hell, last month we were having to deal with the fact that Hasbro were trying to literally wipe out all the 2014 content from people's character sheets. I mean, geez, Osama Bin Laden knew what was up. Everything he owned was in disc form. Boy, I sure hope that sentence doesn't ever get taken out of context. But even worse than that, this statement from Chris, the implication that he is painting here, is horrifying for the actual current employees of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. The people who, you know, actually create Dungeons and Dragons. They do the art, they design the game, they write the books. The creators, the people who actually make the game possible. Because regardless of what you think about AI, the dark truth is that executives at Hasbro are desperate to begin replacing employees with AI at every single level. Except for the executive level, of course. After all, AI could never do an executive's job. They could never attend whiskey brunches with shareholders or make arbitrary gut reaction decisions that determine the fate of millions based only on the vibes. And look, this might sound outlandish, but Hasbro already routinely fire designers and employees at every opportunity. We had a huge cull late last year just before Christmas. They have no respect at all for their employees. Hasbro are desperate to take jobs away from people and give it to nothing, just a slave bot. I mean, ultimately, slave bots are the perfect employee, right? No sleep, no family, no existence outside of the office, and they don't even need a cubicle. Though, hot tip, you can't just kidnap people, and if you don't give them access to the outside world, no one will try to stop you. <laughs> and sure, okay, Hasbro and Watsy have flatly denied that they're using AI over and over and over again. They've flatly denied it a bunch, and they have claimed that AI will never come to Dungeons and Dragons. It's just that every single time Hasbro make an official statement saying that they are definitely not building the Terminator, a leaked speech comes out of a Hasbro executive talking about how all that fake skin is coming along real well. So who are we going to believe then? The marketing department or Chris Cox, the guy who pays the marketing department to lie for him? Because Hasbro's marketing team know that AI will go down very badly in the hardcore Dungeons and Dragons community. But ultimately, that doesn't really matter to the executives. They're still going to do it. This latest scandal is not Hasbro saying that they are testing the waters with AI. It's not them saying that they're gonna dip a toe into the turgid waters of trapping the RPG community in a walled off digital Fortnite garden with Sigil. No, no, they have already made a plan. They are committed to doing it right in front of us. And they are pushing an attritional war. Hasbro are pushing the limits over and over and over again, hoping that by scandal number 307, people will finally stop caring, weather down by the endless outrages, and just cash in, please. They want everybody to stop caring. Well, guess what? I won't stop. I fucking love this game. I love RPGs, and I do not want to see it transformed into something monstrous. If Hasbro keep fucking around, I will keep making sure that they find out. But to do that, I need your help. My videos keep getting demonetized, and that's partly because I'm flashing up grotesque and sexualized imagery between frames every so often that are subliminally impacting you. But also, just like the entire content I make isn't very advertiser-friendly, according to Google. So if you want to help me keep on top of 
all this, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash discourse minis, or simply subscribe to the channel and give it a like to help me stay relevant within the evil YouTube algorithm. Again, yeah, stuff like that's keeping me out. And I want to give a massive thanks to my current patrons, especially CryptoKev. Thank you so much. I could not do this without you. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.